So today I'm going to be doing a coolant change on the Rover 75 diesel. I've had the car for two and a half years now and it's pretty much the only thing that hasn't been done. The coolant looks fine when I took some out and tested it all fine. Looks pretty clear but because I've got no record of it ever having been done and it's a cheap thing to buy and it's quite easy to do on this, I thought I would give it a go. So the bottom hose is way down. There you can see the Jubilee clip. I put a new one on that last year. So we need to take the under tray off in order to get to that. And that's your header tank there. There's also a bleed screw there, but I don't, I'm hoping I won't need to use that. Because it looks a bit stuck and I don't want to shear it off. So I'm hoping just running the car with the cap off will be enough. So the first thing we need to do is lower the under tray. You don't need to take all of it off. You just need to take the front two rows of bolts or screws or whatever is holding your under tray on off. Let's do it. So there's may or may not be fixings holding your under tray on or you might not even have one. You can see some of my fixings are missing but the rest of them are just plain screws and I'm going to take off these ones as well just to lower it down enough onto the flat. Don't need to take it right off because that way it'll be a bit of a nightmare to line it back up. So that should be enough. It enabled me to get to the Jubilee clip and change it last year because it was getting rusty. So I've done it before so that should be enough. So let's take them off. That's the under tray down as far as it needs to be. I've not completely taken it off. It's still held on at the back so it makes it nice and easy to line up. And you can see there, that's the Jubilee clip there. So we'll just take that off. And we will drain the radiator. I'll have a last minute look to see if there is a drain tap. But I don't think there is, so feeling that, we'll take that off and we'll drain it. Right, that's me just waiting for the... Remainder of the coolant to drain, it's not actually very much in it. I, I, empty, I put the pipe back on halfway through and emptied it, but the basin, but it's not actually very much in it. So what you'll see I've done is I've pulled that bottom hose back behind the subframe because it actually has got an upward bend in it as it goes into the radiator. So I wanted to get the pipe pointing down because otherwise there would be about a pint of water probably left in the bottom of the radiator. So I'm just letting that drain down. What we'll do while we're waiting is I'm going to get some grease onto that metal water pipe. It's just surface corrosion that's on it, but I don't want that to get any worse. So I'll get some grease on that and also on the screws for the under tray because we're a bit dry coming out. So we'll get that done. Right, that's us all buttoned back up, so time to refill it and see if it will bleed just with the cap off. Just running it up to temperature now. Um, it only seemed to take a litre, but having said that, it's now starting to drop the level. Hopefully once the thermostat opens, it'll start to drop and fill in all the wee nooks and crannies in the cooling system. Right, that's it. Stopped using the coolant now. It should be it run up to temperature. Now we wait to go yet. So the next thing to do is to test the strength of the coolant that we've just put in with a hygrometer. So we're basically looking for uh, all these things to be floating. It says number of floating discs. Shows degree of protection. You can't really see that because it's A not focused and B it is shining on it. Let's try and focus on that. No, it's not. There we go. Right. Uh, the level's going down a wee bit as well, so it's good. It's soaking it up. So we'll just get what we can from the header tank. Okay, squeeze it. And suck it in. And as you can see, 
We're good to go. And they seem to be sinking again. Right, so what we'll do is we will top it up with some neat antifreeze. So we've only got down to minus seven at the moment. Aye, that's not enough. Right, okay. So we'll get some neat antifreeze in there before we go for a wee drive. So what we're going to do now is we're going to test to see what temperature the car's running at. Now apologies for all the reflections here, but I'm going to go into diagnostic mode. I might not get this first time, but it's a bit of a footer. We'll give it a try. This will show the true temperature the car's running at. The temperature gauge on the 75 is just for decoration only. So we press it and hold it once. And then we quickly go to number 19. Log on, log off. Three, four, five, six, seven. Right, there we go, and the car's running at 63 degrees at the moment, so we're looking for it to be about between 85, I think. So 63 degrees, and it's only showing there. Go for a quick run, see what it does. Right, took it for a drive. It was getting a bit hot, got up to about 95 degrees, and the heaters were stone cold, so it started to turn back. And then, just all of a sudden, the little readout there went down to about, straight down to about 75 and the heater started blowing hot, so there was also an airlock that had come out, so it's now sitting at about 81. So what we'll do is we'll drive back along the road, um, give it a bootful, um, just to make absolutely sure that that temperature stays where it should, and then we'll get back let it cool down and we'll see if it needs topped up. I've got the heaters on full blast now and they're absolutely roasting hot. I'm just leaving them on. The car's nice and warm as well so I can always like giving it a wee, a wee jag once it gets up to the third gear map kicks in. Just hang about. Turn that down so I don't go back in the car and it's absolutely boiling. It's to be 
29 degrees here next Tuesday. So, the aircon doesn't work, but I want to at least make sure the heaters are on. Cool.